Welcome back. In this lecture, we will discuss on how to maintain an active drainage of a hematoma cavity to prevent fluid accumulation. Let's begin. Continuous suction drainage prevents fluid accumulation and hematoma recurrence by providing an active drainage to the hematoma. This is classified as a surgical treatment of the hematoma. You will need a scalpel handle, a 19 to 21 gauge butterfly catheter, vacutainer blood tubes sealed, 2O to 3O monofilament suture material, and suturing instruments. You will also need bandaging materials such as tongue depressors, surgical tape, cotton padding, gauze roll, and elastic bandages. To start, cut the syringe adapter from the butterfly catheter. The syringe adapter is the end wherein the syringe is usually attached to. Fenestrate the sides of the tubing 1.5 to 2 centimeters from its end. These windows or fen fenestrates must not be more than half the diameter of the tubing to prevent accidental breakage. The patient is laid on its lateral recumbency with the affected ear up. Clip the hair on the concave and convex surface of the ear and prep aseptically. If the ear canal is patent, seal this with gauze sponges or cotton plugs like we discussed. Make a stab incision into the hematoma with the tip of your scalpel blade. Make sure that the incision you make is only as large as the tube you have prepared. Evacuate as much fluid as you can. With a small syringe containing warm sterile saline, flush the inside of the cavity to remove the fibrin clots. Now, not all fibrin clots are loose and most of it are firmly attached to the auricular cartilage near the broken blood vessels. Not being able to remove all these clots and fibrin is one of the big disadvantages of this method. The cut tubing of the butterfly catheter is inserted into the cavity through the stab incision that you made. Make sure that all the windows are all placed within the cavity to facilitate drainage. To secure the tubing, place a purse string suture around the skin and the tubing to create a negative pressure. Afterwards, secure the tubing to the ear with a finger trap suture pattern. How to make or how to do the suture pattern is easily found in YouTube. Finish the pattern with a single bite into the skin. Insert the needle end of the butterfly tubing into the vacutainer tube to create a closed seal and active drainage. Once the tube has partially filled with blood and serous fluids, the vacuum on the drain will be lost. To replace this, kink the tubing off the drain remove the needle from the vacutainer tube, and reinsert it in a new tube to re-establish re active suction. The pina is then positioned dorsally to expose the external ear canal and concave surface of the pina. Bandaging of the ear is outlined in the next video. A full head bandage with a hole on top of the ear canal may be placed for the easier administration of topical medications. Always be careful of the vacutainer of getting removed during bandaging. This tube is then secured on the bandage with a tape. During the first day, it might need to be changed two to three times after drain placement. Make sure to teach the clients on how to do the vacutainer changes in outpatient cases. Once half of the tube is full, change it. The fluid volume being drained is expected to decrease during the several sorry to decrease over several days. To see how this method is done, please refer to this video assignment. For the next lecture video, we will discuss the ear fenestration technique in treating oral hematoma. That is the last lecture video for this chapter. Thank you and see you then.